Shut up and sit down. Hi, I'm PJ Mitavish, and welcome back to another D3 tutorial. Uh, this one we're going to do 2016 and it's section B, question B1. And this one was requested, you see here. And basically it is more, more than normally it's your two planes, but this time it's four planes. And we'll just uh, fast forward through the elevation and uh, plan. Now, one thing to point out, is not gonna read through the question. You should have that in front of you if you're doing this. But uh, the distance from the X, Y line up, the height for the elevation point F is, uh, is not given. And But if you read the question, part A and B and C, basically le let you leave that out and then you have to figure out the height then in part uh, D. So just say part A, it says, draw the given plan of four triangular planes and complete the elevation of the intersecting planes ABC, ABD, and DEV. So it doesn't even mention F in the elevation, so you leave out point F in the elevation. So I'm going to draw the elevation plan and I'll fast forward through it. So that's part A done. We have drawn the plan of the four intersecting uh, planes, four intersecting triangles, and we've done the elevation uh, all except for part uh, point F, which is going to be on that line somewhere. So that is part A done. So part B then, determine the dihedral angle between the planes ABC and ABD. Okay, so it's between ABC and ABD. Now this is a nice four point uh, question seen as two of the points are common to both planes so you have the line section already so the line a1 b1 here in plan or a b in elevation is your line section now in order to get the dihedral angle you must find a true length of that uh, line and section so to get a true length of it you need to do two auxiliary reviews well the first auxiliary review gives you the true length the second auxiliary review gives you the dihedral angle so i'm going to project Perpendicular to the line AB up here to the left hand side, an auxiliary view of just those two planes. So if you project from the plan, it's an auxiliary elevation, so you get your height to an elevation. And I'll obviously put in a datum line just to save me a bit of room there. And then that will give you a true length of line AB. Then we're going to do a point view of it and we'll project our second auxiliary view parallel to it. So first things first, project out all four points to the left hand side here and put in your new X1, Y1. And these are all projected perpendicular to line A1, B1, your line section. Okay, so we projected points A, B, C, and D out perpendicular to the line A1, B1. So these are perpendicular. We put in our new X1, Y1 which is par or parallel to our line section or, in this case, or perpendicular to your, in or to your projection lines. So your X, Y lines are always going to be perpendicular to your uh, projection lines. So we're projecting the plan, so it's an auxiliary elevation. So we're getting our heights from the X, Y line up to our points in elevation. As you can see, I put in a datum line here in yellow. That's just bringing the X, Y line, projecting it up to my closest point, in this case, D. It's cutting out all that gap. So D is on your X, Y line, therefore, D2 here is on the X, Y line. Then just get the height from the data line with your compass up to the points and mark them on our new auxiliary elevation. our auxiliary elevation once you find the four points again mark them uh, join the same points together the same lambda together so you had ABC and you had ABD so there's your uh, ABC and ABD so now this line 
A2B2 is a true length of the line section. It's a true length because in the previous view here in the plan, uh, AB, the line section, is parallel to the uh, XY line. So if it's parallel in this view, it has to be a true length in this view here. So that's our true length. So now if we project, look at it in this direction here, getting a point view of the line section, i.e. projecting everything in parallel, which sh should see the line AB as a point, therefore we'll see the other two, um, or the two surfaces as uh, edge views, which will give us a V-shape down here, and that will again label our dihedral angle. So do your second auxiliary view and predict them parallel to that true length down here to the bottom left. Okay, so that's our X2, Y2 put in perpendicular to the projection lines again. So now you're projecting from this auxiliary view for a second auxiliary view, therefore you're working from it's x y line back to the last view so the x one y one back to the plan okay so i might put in a datum line again but just bring that x one back to c just to save me a bit of room just to make sure i stay on the sheet so i'm projecting the x one y one back to c for that line and then i'm going to get the all the heights from that up to my points and mark in my new uh my second auxiliary review to give you the dehedral angle Okay, and that is your dihedral angle marked in. So these are, what this gives you is a point view of the line section, which is your line AB, which would then give you an edge view of the two planes. And if you see the edge of the two planes, you can get the true angle between them. So that is part B done. Now, part C, it says, draw the elevation and plan of a horizontal line on the surface uh, DEB, and then determine the true inclination of the surface DEB to the horizontal plane. Okay, so we're going to, have to draw a horizontal line on the surface in the elevation, and then we'll project that to the plan, do a point view of that line, and then figure out the true inclination. So horizontal line, for it to be horizontal, you have to draw it in the elevation. Now it has to be parallel to the XY line. So I'm going to put it in here with uh, green, maybe. So it's on the surface DEB. So I'm going to draw a horizontal line from E along the surface. Okay, so that's my horizontal line put in. Now the finding and plan, we know it's coming from E and it cuts the line BD at this point here. So if I project that point down to the BD line in plan, I'll get my true shape of the horizontal line in plan, or true length, I should say. Now, this green line here in plan represents the horizontal line from the elevation, that's the plan of it. But what it's giving you is it's giving you a true length because it is parallel or it's horizontal in the elevation. So therefore, it's a true length in plan. So if it's a true length, and if we do a point view of that line, i.e. project your plane up here to the top right, parallel to that angle, it will give you a point view of that line on the surface DEB. That means you'll get an edge view of the surface DEB. And if we get an edge view of it, we can figure out the angle between it and the horizontal plane. Now again, you're projecting from the plan, so therefore it's an auxiliary elevation. So I'm going to get my uh, heights from the elevation for this auxiliary view. I'm going to use the same down line I used there because D will be on it, and that will make it uh, a bit easier to determine the length or determine the angle. Uh, so from the down line, get your heights up, mark in the three points to get the uh, uh, surface or the edge view of the DEB surface. the edge view of the surface DEB, thanks to our true length here. And we can measure the angle now between the X1, Y1 and the 
surface there to get the true inclination between it and the um, horizontal plane. So 51 degrees. Now I just noticed that it says determine um, the true inclination of the surface. So for that I'd mark in the measurement. Normally with the hedral angle, so like part um, B here, we just indicate, we just show it. But uh, also the wording in it says determine the hedral angle between the planes. So it's no harm maybe to just write the angle out to make sure that you get the full marks on it. Okay, so that is part A, B and C. Now finished. And uh, lastly is part D. So it gives you, it says, it says the dihedral angle between the planes DEB and DEF is 170 degrees. Complete the projection of the surface DEF. Okay, so we're kind of working backwards on this. Uh, it's giving you the dihedral angle if you do your two roots in reviews, but it's not giving you a height of F. So we're going to project, we need to find a true length uh, of that dihedral or that line section first. So we're going to project down are four points perpendicular to the line E, D here, to the right hand side. That's going to be an auxiliary elevation, and then you get your height to the elevation. As you know, you don't have F, so that's why we have to do the second auxiliary view, find, put in your dihedral angle and work backwards. Okay, so as you notice, there's something missing there from our auxiliary view because you're getting your heights from the elevation because of auxiliary elevation, we don't know height for F, so I can't put in the plane uh, DEF. What we do have though is a true length of that line section, which is the line DE. Normally we go parallel now and do our second auxiliary view and figure out the dihedral angle. In this case, we're still going to do that, but the dihedral angle is given to you and we can work backwards then to find out. Okay, so that is the edge of the surface, DEB. So we know that the dihedral angle is 170, so if we draw a line of 170 degrees out here, it gives us that surface, DEF. Okay, so now we know that this is the edge of the surface, DEF, but where is F on it? So how do we get the heights for uh, B and D here. So you're working from projecting from this auxiliary view. So you're working the X, Y, back. So we got our height for D on the same uh, height B. But also, if you work back here, the distance from the X, Y line or the height in this view for F is the distance from the X, one, Y, one back to F. So if I get this height and draw a parallel to the X, two, Y, two, I'll figure out where F is on that plane. edge with the plane DEF, this is point F, project that back down, same angle as you're projecting these, and it should cross, and it should cross the line from F. Now with all my uh, space saving and datum lines, if you notice here, so what we should see is the F should cross the um, projected line from F, but it doesn't look. It's working back into the plan. So what's happened here is with all my space saving, F is actually below the datum line, therefore it's gonna be below the um, X11 one, one, one here. So what's happened is I need to project F1 slightly backwards and that shows me where F is for that view. So I'm just going to put that in lightly. So that's where F was. This view, this first auxiliary view. So just to recap on that, uh, because of the datum lines, when you project point F back, for me it was, it was actually in on top of the plan here. So that's my point F, okay, because that was where it was, you project it back down and it has to be projected from the plan. So for you, it might be up here, but for me, it's below it. So therefore, the distance from that point F to the X1, Y1 behind it, if I mark that from a datum line down, because that's where I was getting all my measurements, uh, I'll mark it down from that line on the F line here, and that will give me my point F in elevation.
That's part uh, D done, and that's the full question done. So again, just to make sure it's clear, I say space by putting a datum line in here. So if you didn't, you'd, your auxiliary view here would be higher up. And I haven't drawn in strong because I don't want to mess it up too much and uh, make it a bit messy and unclear. All right, so this was our 170 degrees marked in here, and you are backwards and find the height for F. So um, one or two comments I mentioned uh, my construction lines. Now, I normally use a, the H or 2H for a construction line, but I use a 2B today just to try and make them a bit heavier. Uh, now, it looks messier to me, but hopefully that will make it a bit clearer for the videos, and I'll try doing that from now on, and you can let me know whether it uh, works or not. So as always, I hope this helped. Uh, if it did, leave a like and we'll upload or I'll upload a few more uh, soon.